live from the Masonic in San Francisco. It's the Cube, covering Lenovo Tech World 2016. Brought to you by Lenovo. Now here are your hosts, Stu Miniman and John Walls. Well, welcome back to Lenovo Tech World here in San Francisco. We're in the Masonic Auditorium, John Walls, along with Stu Miniman, and we're wrapping up here uh, from San Fran with the chance to look back at all that we've heard today, Stu. Um, you know, the whiz bang stuff I find you know, pretty interesting, right? We've seen new devices, we saw the new tablet, the Fab Pro 2, and what have you. Uh, and there are a lot of bells and whistles, a lot of fun stuff, right? Virtual reality, augmented reality. But underneath all of that, right, it's all data. It all needs the underpinning. It all needs foundation and infrastructure. And, and I think that's the interesting play here is that Lenovo sees that and obviously is trying to prepare for that future. Yeah, absolutely. So first, right, you, you talk an event like this. Masonic is beautiful, John. Yeah. Um, you know, really cool demos, you know, the music's been pumping, keeping us right. hopping here. Right. Um, and we're on the keynote stage. I mean, it's kind of nice, it right? Is, it, yeah. uh, I feel like, you know, you go to the Super Bowl, there's Sports Center. We've been called the ESPN Attack. So, uh, <laughs> you know, John and Dave, you know, we're we're missing you here in San Francisco. We're on the field. Um, but, uh, you know, yeah, we're, we're on the field. <laughs> we're on the field. Uh, here, here in San Francisco. So, yeah. uh, you know, first of all, uh, you know, Lenovo, I mean, you know, leading brand in PCs. And you know why? Why the CEO said uh, you know we're you know personal computing uh, you know is really becoming obsolete. It's connected computing. Uh, you know, I, and I look at it and said you know right if they don't move beyond you know the PC business, the PC business is going to move beyond them. We understand where those are going. So you know the, you know big pushes into mobile, and you know we'll talk a lot about the enterprise. I actually I traded notes with a cousin of mine. My cousin Brandon Miniman really understands you know the mobility space. Uh, he and one of his brothers created a, a website called Pocket Now really understands the consumer space. He was actually watching the keynote and he saw the, the Moto Z mm -hmm. and he said, you know, the Android space has been kind of dull the last couple of years. They got some cool things. That connected piece, the developer angle, you know, he says thumbs up, you know, something he wants to look in. I mean, heck, they brought in Ashton Kutcher uh, right. to, you know, kind of show this. I don't know if he's invested in it, but, you know, he said he'll judge the million dollar developer thing that he's going. Um, but the reason that ties this all together is all those devices and the smart devices, you know, PCs with virtual reality and augmented reality, uh, and the Internet of Things, at the end of the day, there's the cloud and infrastructure, uh, you know, that, that, that are going to back those up. So that's where, uh, as you know, we, we've said a number of times, the, the boring infrastructure stuff sits behind there. Uh, and on theCUBE today, we, we had the people from Lenovo say, from the server side, their job is to make sure that it just becomes invisible. You know, this is the foundational layer that sits behind everything. Um, you know, we always said in the storage world, it's like you don't think about the fact that, you know, when you go to the ATM that, you know, hey, can, can I lose some of that data? Oh wait, you know, sorry, that paycheck went in. Oops, sorry, no money. So, right. you know, we understand that the, you know, the, the nitty gritty stuff that happens in information technology behind the scenes, most people don't pay attention to it, but it is critical to how our modern society works. And we heard, you know, we were talking with several people on the server side, and they said, wait, well, wait a minute, you know, we've actually been around a long time. This is part of the IBM acquisition, you know, the System X. Uh, back in 2014, said, so we're not newbies to this at all, it's just we've reconfigured, we've reorganized. But on you go to the storage side, and we heard Stuart McRae readily admit, we are new to this, this is a new game to us, but they see that as an opportunity of a lifetime, he called it. So it's interesting that, that they have obviously cited what they think is a big upside, a big opportunity, and they're trying to seize it now on the storage side. Yes, yes. So, so right, so first of all, right, on the server side, of course, IBM's got a great legacy there. Um, you know, they really were the first in the blade server market. They brought, you know, Linux, you know, to a large parts of data center uh, when their servers brought, you know, small form factors, a lot of innovation that IBM's uh, driven in their times, uh, but, the x86 business was not getting the attention that it needed when it was inside of IBM. Mm -hmm. IBM still has the power systems, they still have the Z systems. Um, so, you know, spinning it off was helpful for IBM so that they could focus on what they need. And it's going to, you know, Lenovo hopes reinvigorate the x86 group. Mm -hmm. uh, we heard that there were some, you know, some challenges. Anytime you make an acquisition, and Lenovo made two big acquisitions, the Motorola piece uh, and uh, the, the system uh, X piece. So both of those are big acquisitions, a lot of people. Um, there were some people that left the organization, there were people some cut, figuring out the strategy that it fits, but they think they've got that where they want to go, uh, and they think they can win back market share and be aggressive, uh, both in the traditional enterprise space as well as the hyperscale place, because uh, Lenovo has global reach, global support, uh, and they can push much lower margins than IBM can in the hardware space. 
And where that fits for the storage side is what we talked about with Stuart and, and, and Radhika and some of the others, is if you look at the hardware that makes up storage today, it's x86 servers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, underneath it used to be custom monolithic hardware that you built. And today, you know, it, it's mostly Intel-based architectures, uh, and they did that. When EMC switched their main product line, the Symmetrics, you know, over to an Intel-based architecture, you know, it went pretty smoothly for them. So it, if you look at Lenovo and you say, okay, they have what they, they, they want to be one of the top leaders in x86, should they be a storage player? Well, if you're a server vendor and, st and, and storage is coming back to the server either to build storage arrays like uh, scale out filers or for hyperconverge where you've got both compute and storage together, well, you're either going to be a supplier to storage companies or, you know, hey, they, you should have that mix of partnering and what you do internal. So it makes perfect sense for Lenovo to be there. Um, Stuart says it's the once in a lifetime. He said, well, you know, it's usually every 15 to 20 years you get a big opportunity with some of these, you know, seismic shifts. Uh, but absolutely, uh, Lenovo has the right to be at the table and uh, that we are in the early parts of their journey to see how they can compete both against the big guys as well as, uh, you know, some of the incumbents and partnering with the likes of, you know, Cloudian, Nixenta and uh, Nutanix, who is the leader in hyperconverged. Yeah, that's uh, today. I want to hit you up on the partnership thing too, yeah. because we've heard that a lot, right? That if they don't have the expertise, they're going to ally themselves with those who do. And we see that on the networking side with Juniper. You know, Radhika Krishnan was telling us about that. So that seems to me to be smart play, the right play, because they're augmenting their offerings now with the expertise of those who have really been acutely focused on it. Yeah, um, it, it's interesting. There's, you know, you know, there's been the vertical integration of a lot of companies. If you look at an Oracle, you look at an IBM. How much of the stack can they own? Um, but when you talk about the breadth of these solutions, if you're doing IoT, you're going to be partnering with somebody, just because just all of those devices and the edges, nobody's going to own all of the pieces. Um, so. Uh, you know, Lenovo uh, is starting out, they've you know, put their places to where they have some of their early partnerships, uh, ones that fit well with kind of the architectures that they have, uh, and they'll grow that out. On the networking side, you know, Juniper's a good partner uh, to work with. Uh, they both are interested in kind of that uh, disaggregation of hardware and software. Um, networking is one that we're still, I mean, Cisco's still dominant in that marketplace, um, but uh, you know, we, we believe that there are places where uh, you know, customers will start to make changes uh, and, and move to more of these distributed architectures um, and, and make some of those decisions separately uh, for, for hardware and software. So uh, interesting opportunities there. Uh, remains to be seen, I mean, who knows, you know, two years down the road, five years down the road, how much is Lenovo partnering? Today they say they, you know, don't compete with any of those partners. Well, as you grow out a portfolio, eventually you reach right. a point where you compete. Dell used so to say, say- Naturally there's friction, right, yeah. at some point. So, you know, I, I remember back, you know, if, if you went to Dell, you know, 10 plus years ago, it was, they partnered for storage, they partnered for, for, with networking well, they made acquisitions, they made a big acquisition, uh, you know, with EMC more recently, uh, which will be wrapping up soon, and so, you know, now they have, you know, their partnerships and what they do internal, so it, it's always that maturation of the solution, and, uh, you know, especially for storage, partnering out's a great way to start and get you into these markets, and they're changing fast. I mean, that's what we've seen is, you know, storage as a whole moves real slow, but boy, there are some micro changes that are happening, and, you know, getting, uh, you know, new architectures ramping up to a billion dollars in a couple of years, you know, happens faster than, you know, I've seen in my career. And it seems Lenovo has the commitment to get there, too, which I, th I've, I found that interesting. Always a pleasure to work with you. Good seeing you out here. Uh, your final thoughts, I mean, before we head off, just about in terms of, of their landscape. We've, we've talked from, again, from many of the folks inside the company, very optimistic, upbeat, positive, and, and assured, I think, of the path they're on. You feel good about it? Yeah, no, I, I, I was impressed by what I saw here, and it's interesting. Uh, you know, there's a, 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 a large server manufacturer that's having a conference, uh, you know, in, in another city that the Cube's broadcasting today. Um, they just shed their consumer division. Uh, Lenovo believes that, you know, it is the, the, the breadth of the portfolio and, you know, very different portfolio than, than that other company uh, that they have. So how they work together, how they'll put those solutions together. Um, I think Lenovo has an understanding of where they want to take it. Um, there's some tough competition out there and things are changing fast. So uh, it's always exciting to watch this on theCUBE. Uh, I'm excited. We've got, you know, so many shows coming up here. Um, we talked about Nutanix next. Uh, I'll be back hey, here. You're a busy guy. In San Francisco for uh, the Red Hat show. Um, 
you know, summer will be gone quick. We'll be back uh, for VMworld uh, this, this year in uh, Las Vegas. So, yeah, John, thank you for coming out for this one. A lot of fun. Uh, I want to say a big thanks to our team. I mean, uh, you know, this one uh, was one, uh, you know, uh, getting here on the keynote stage is a, so, some unique characteristics. Uh, we're also broadcasting uh, from, from the Fairmont. So I want to just, you know, yeah, big thanks to Pat, Greg, Chuck, Brendan, Alex. Uh, you you know, got them all. Team effort. Yeah. Uh, you know, everybody back in the home office that have been blogging and the cube gems and everything else. Um, you know, team effort here. Uh, really appreciate everybody uh, watching here. You can always hit us up uh, on, on the Twitters uh, and, uh, you know, see Silicon Angle TV for what's so, going yeah, we, on. We had a one hour turnaround here. And, and if we didn't need time lapse to show you, because they were flying around in fast motion the whole time, <laughs> but did a crackerjack job of getting things set up. We do appreciate that. Stu, been a pleasure. And uh, we thank all of you as well for joining us here on theCUBE. For Stu Minimum, I'm John Wall. So long from Lenovo Tech World here in San Francisco on theCUBE.